One of the most prevalent themes of the Lisa games is pain. The developer, Dingling, really wanted the suffering of the characters to come across and excellently integrated it into almost every facet of the game. The narrative, the world, and even the gameplay itself is used to get this theme across. But what's often lost in the bleakness of the games are the lighthearted moments of comedy that are dotted throughout. Moments like Lucas's protracted, exaggerated death, Nern's storytelling, or Brad's climb through the EWC. But the thing that probably best exemplifies the absurd humor of the Lisa games are the Salvation Rangers. A play off of the real-world Power Rangers, the Salvation Rangers are a group of vigilantes working to fight against the evil that permeates through Olaith, which, for them, manifests itself as costumed foes that don't really pose as any real threat to anything. Seemingly oblivious to the real horrors that plague Olaith, the Salvation Rangers blissfully play their game with their rivals as the world suffers around them. But the brutality of Olaith doesn't spare the ignorant, nor the innocents, and unfortunately, even the Salvation Rangers succumb to the cruelty of the land. Let's recount the saga of the Salvation Rangers and all its silliness, and the tragedy of their downfall. Their story starts in media res, at the outset of a battle with one of their adversaries, Blake the Snake. He screams at them that today is the day that he ends them with his serious snake slaps, taking an attack stance to ready himself for battle. But Salvation Red is pleased to tell him that his evil plan is going to fail. And at that point, the Salvation Rangers introduce themselves. There's Salvation Red, the virtuous leader. Salvation Blue, the inspirational champion. Salvation Yellow, the muscular icon. Salvation Green, the towering monument. Salvation Black, the youthful rookie. And Salvation Pink, the... There's silence, and Pink is lying off to the side, not seeming at all interested in this story. So Red goads him to get him to participate, but Pink tells him he's too hungover to deal with this. Red then notices Pink's shawl of justice is missing, and their game is interrupted by a short out-of-character argument that rages between the two, which results in Pink leaving. Pink's behavior is frustrated Red, who tries to get back into character and laments Pink's disappearance, leaving them unable to complete their ultimate pose and thus doomed for certain defeat against Blake the Snake. At that moment, a bearded, balding civilian and his friends come to their aid, defeating Blake the Snake, prompting him to use Slithering Vanish to flee. Having barely avoided catastrophe, the rangers thank the bearded stranger, but tell him to leave the fighting to the true heroes next time, likely so their story wouldn't be interrupted. The next part of their story takes place in a construction site where the six rangers watch Blake the Snake dangle the princess over the edge. He proudly exclaims that he's got them right where he wants them, and orders them to give up their power helmets, or the princess will plummet to her death. He lets out a sinister snicker, but stops when he notices something about one of the rangers. It bothers him so bad, it causes him to break character, and he complains to Red that Pink isn't even wearing his uniform. This causes Red to blow up in anger, deepening the rift between the two so far that Pink decides he's had enough and quits the Salvation Rangers, joining the bearded man from earlier who has stumbled upon this quirky scene. Again left without a sixth member, the Salvation Rangers can't do a thing. Needing to find another ranger, the five remaining members vanish, leaving Blake and the princess to wait for them to return. The rangers succeed in recruiting another member, this one wearing a light beige color. One day, while frolicking in the heat of the desert, they are approached by one of their most fearsome foes, Demon X. A battle ensues that results in the rangers' defeat, and Demon X relishes in their impending death. The rangers are left with no options once again. But that's when the civilians from before intervene once again, attempting to take on Demon X. But they are utterly destroyed by the Horned Devil, leaving the rangers facing the end with no hope. Suddenly, Salvation Black pipes up and says he may have a plan, but is hesitant to enact it, since it will require him to go deep in his past, a place he doesn't want to go. 
Red implores him to find the strength to do so, insisting it's their only chance. Salvation Black draws up his courage and dives into his memories, back to when he was a boy during a hot summer day. He was plus-sized back in those days, being so large that he got stuck in the doorframe of his papa's house while on his way home from the market. It was a low point of his life, a point in which he realized his weight had become a real problem. But he soon found that being stuck in that door was nothing compared to what he saw inside the house. Wide-eyed and helpless, he watched as his father lustily threw compliments to a dancing prostitute, shocking his innocent mind with the fevers of sexual passion. Looking back on the moment, he realizes it wasn't what he saw that hurt him the most. It was the fact that they didn't notice him stuck there for two weeks. The scene returns to the fight with Demon X, where everyone stands in an uncomfortable silence. Red is the one that finally breaks the awkwardness, telling Black he doesn't understand how his traumatic story helps them in this situation. And that's when Black reveals the meaning behind his story. Demon X's horns will get him stuck in a doorway, just like how he was when he was a kid. So if they flee into the cave that's behind them, then Demon X will be unable to catch them. It finally clicks for Red, who taunts Demon X by calling him Dumb and X, and tries to get him to follow them into the cave. The plan works like a charm, and Demon X is foiled when his horns prevent him from giving chase. Finding another entrance to the cave, the civilians make their way in where they talk to a few of the members. Beige, the new recruit that's standing separated from the rest of the group, mentions that he doesn't think the others like him very much, while Black admits the reflection he's undergone is making him want to eat again. Yellow grumbles that Demon X stole his pose, and Blue mentions feeling weird lately, having violent, intimate thoughts. Red, however, is congratulating the Rangers on their work, commending their determination, when suddenly his speech is interrupted by a scream. They all look to the cave entrance and see Demon X inching towards them. Not ready to give up, he contorted his neck into an unnatural position disfiguring himself, and is now held aloft by one of his horns. Unable to move with his legs, he's resorted to using a stick to pull himself forward, and now utters an evil cackle as he approaches. The terrifying sight is too much for the rangers, and they flee, leaving Demon X a twisted mess, wondering who the real bad guys are. However, the rangers were able to avert disaster, and now live to fight another day. But their day of reckoning is closer than any of them could have imagined, as those mysterious feelings that Blue felt eventually manifest into the fall of the Salvation Rangers. The group finds their way up to the pinnacle of Seesaw Valley in Hollywood, perhaps to celebrate their victory. And that's when something begins to happen. Red's body begins to stretch and swell, and the weight gets too much for him to hold, so he topples over onto his back as a mutated mass. Yellow's arm and neck stretch as well, but become rigid, and he flops backwards across the mammoth Red, his arm twitching unnaturally. Beige is simply slumped over Red, unmoving. Blue's body contorts into a twisting monstrosity, and unable to control these violent thoughts any longer, lashes out to the closest thing to him, his friend, Salvation Black. Blue is now covered in blood, with the decapitated head of Black lying by his feet. Although a harmless group of men that found joy in the bleak world of Olathe by playing a game amongst themselves, they also tried to find joy through the vices of the land, and it eventually led to their demise. All except for one. In this gruesome finality, Salvation Green is nowhere to be seen. Somehow, in the chaos of his friend's mutations, he manages to get away with his life, escaping to a cave in a valley in eastern Olathe. However, with the passing of his friends, he is now alone. The weight of the green helmet upon his head reminds him of the pain of their passing, and unable to cope with it, he casts it aside, leaving it on the floor of that cave and he begins to aimlessly wander through the land. He eventually finds himself outside a small shack on the edge of a cliff, and with nowhere else to go, 
decides to stay here for a time. When no one comes down to the shack, he learns it's been abandoned. But that's when he gets a visit from a strange person. A small figure with long black hair wearing a mask. As they approach, they seem nice enough. So Green introduces himself as Thule and tells them what he's learned of the shack, offering to let them stay here if they would like as well. And that's when the small figure removes their mask and Thule notices the figure is a girl. Remembering the rumors of a girl being found in Olathe, he realizes he's talking to Buddy, the girl the stories are based on. He politely introduces himself to her, but she merely asks him what he wants from her. Thrown off by her response, Tuli answers with the first thing that's in his head, then asks back a question that no man Buddy has ever met has asked her. He asks her what she wants. She is likewise thrown off by his question expecting Thule to be like all the other men she's met in her life. So she double checks, asking him if he doesn't want her. Thule, again surprised, exclaims that he doesn't even know her. How could he want her? However, with the idea brought up, he does see Buddy, with her tussled hair and pouty scowl, as kind of cute, letting out a soft, awkward chuckle. This prompts Buddy to turn from him, and he immediately apologizes, clarifying that he didn't mean anything by that. Buddy turns back to him and asks him if he knows how to fight. Thule admits he doesn't, mentioning a game he used to play with his friends. A game that, looking back, he feels was a little lame. Some unknown feeling begins to well up within him. A strange mixture of shame from the make-believe game he used to play and grief from the loss of innocence he's felt from the death of the Salvation Rangers, the death of his friends. Thule needs someone, anyone, to be there for him in this moment, to tell him it's okay and give him the strength to go on, to continue living his life. But the one person there is unable to connect with anyone that she sees as being unable to be used to satisfy her own selfish desires. And Thule is abandoned there on the cliffside, alone. Driven by the intense loneliness of his existence, he takes off the tire from the nearby tire swing and using its rope, hangs himself from the boughs of the tree that's nearby, ending his misery once and for all. The Salvation Rangers were a group of young men that tried to find some joy in their world by using roleplay as an escape. Their roleplay, while frustrating at times, led to some of their happiest moments, giving them a brief reprieve from the anguish of the world around them. However, they couldn't truly escape from that world, and the dark depths of his brutality eventually swallowed up their childlike brilliance, leaving them as miserable as the rest of the land. And that is the saga of the Salvation Rangers. I know some of the stuff may be a little wonky, like Buddy and Tuli's conversation, but I hope you enjoyed nonetheless. If you have any questions or comments or anything, please feel free to share. I'd be happy to hear from you. But that's it. So thank you for watching and see you later.